Hi everyone, it's Shaw from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be making this shaker card featuring one of the newest blends from Sparkle Blends and it's called Date Night. You're going to see it in more detail later on. Uh, the inspiration for this card came from the pattern paper that you see here. It was part of a Recollections paper pack from Michaels. That was cut down to three and three quarters by five inches. The piece of pink cardstock you see here is a quarter of an inch larger than the pattern paper. And my idea here was just to cover this cardstock with uh, picked raspberry and kitsched flamingo. I actually changed my mind and I decide to make it into an ombre effect. So I go back over the Kitsch Flamingo with the picked raspberry at the bottom, then go back in with some Kitsch Flamingo, bring that up a little bit further, and then fade it out into the light pink of that cardstock. And I really love the way that the ombre came out. There are two different color pink shoes in there, and I thought that it just went perfectly with that. Or th there might be three different color pink shoes. So that actually works out. So now I'm going to clean off my work surface and then we're going to move on to the die cutting. So I used my largest square die to cut out a piece from the ombre from the center. I used the next two square dies to cut out frames from some scrap pink cardstock as well as from the pattern paper. What we're gonna do here is create the shaker well for our card. Now I don't have any foam tape. I have foam dots, but I don't have foam tape. So I thought this would be a great idea to create a shaker well to keep all of the bits. So I cut out a bunch of pieces of scrap cardstock and I'm gluing them together with my Honey Bee Be Creative Precision Glue. I'm also going to be using a piece of acetate, which is also from Doodles Paper Playground, who creates the sparkle blends. And I am cutting just it just a little bit smaller than the outside edge of this frame because we're going to glue it down to the front and then glue the patterned frame on top of it. Later on, I'm actually going to go back in and add a couple more layers to this. But for right now, I thought that it was good enough for all the shaker pieces. I'm using my ATG gun to put a layer of glue down putting the acetate on, and then I'm gonna make sure that the shaker pieces are going to shake in there. I'll find out in a little bit that the test wasn't really great because I didn't use some of the large shaker pieces in there, but for right now, I think that the pieces will fit, but I'll fix it later. Oh, I am now going to go around the edges with my makeup brush to make sure there's no stickiness on the sides because I used glue to glue everything together. I am just going around taking some of that stickiness off if there is anything there, going around to the acetate and making sure that there's no pieces on the front of it. I'm also going around the edges with my ATG and putting on the pattern paper frame so that we can start to assemble the rest of the card. I'm going to put that to the side to let the layers dry because the uh, frame was actually put together like you saw with liquid glue and I wanted to give it some time to dry and make sure it was all stuck together. Now I'm gonna use my ATG on the back of this pattern paper and you'll see that I do a terrible job of lining it up and mostly because I think I was trying to match up the center pieces, which were both cut out, but if you saw the ombre one was not cut in directly in the center or straight. So what I'm going to do and what works best for me is actually turning the card to one of the longest sides and trying to line it up on the long side plus the two smaller sides like you see here. And then at least that way I know that three of the four sides will have kind of an even border on them. And then I hope that the fourth side just does come out right. Hopefully I've cut my paper correctly and it works. Now I'm going back in with my Be Creative Honey Bee glue and gluing down that ombre piece so we can get ready to do the shaker part. To start working on the shaker, we are actually going to make the back piece that seals it. So we're going to take this piece of pattern 
cardstock that was the fallout from the frame and we're going to glue it down to a piece of pink cardstock with a little bit of border around it. And the reason that we're doing that is because it fits perfectly into the frame, but we need it to have a little bit more around the sides so that it can seal the shaker bits off so that they don't fall off, fall out when we put it onto the card base. So you can see me struggling here with making sure that the pattern goes together and I'm making sure that everything looks right so that it looks like it's one seamless piece of paper or piece of cardstock. Oh, once that's done, I am going to get ready to put the sparkle blends together. So we are going to work through, um, go through this, the blend and pick out the pieces that we want. So again, this is the Date Night Sparkle Blends from the January-February release. It is live. I will have the link to the Etsy shop below. Make sure that you go over and check out all of the stuff that Amber has in her shop. I'm also using a sparkle stick, which is another product that Amber carries in her shop. You can also find acetate and trays and a bunch of really, really amazing blends. So I really hope that you go over and check it out. Uh, I will have a code listed below for 10% off for the entire months of February and March, with, to which I'm a guest designer. So um, I would love if you went over and supported Amber and used my code for 10% off. So I'm going through this amazing date night blend, and it's presented like a Valentine's Day, a love blend, but I decided to showcase its real versatility because I don't think you have to use it for a love card. I'm actually going to send this to one of my friends and because of the sentiment that I chose, it's not necessarily a love card, it's just a friend card. So I went through and picked out a bunch of the different pieces of this blend that I really liked or I thought would really work well with this card. And now I'm using my ATG to go around the edges. And you can see when I took the ATG off there, some of the uh, embellishments popped out. So I'm moving them more to, towards the center and trying to be a little bit more gentle. And this is where you should be a little bit smarter than me. If you try this, I would actually make a mark on both the backing as well as the frame to exactly where to line it up because that would have made life so much easier. I actually had to adjust it several times that I did off camera. And you can see here, I'm not getting a really good shake because there are some pieces that are in there that are domed. There's uh, a little bit of the, the larger white ones are kind of getting, causing them to get stuck. So I actually went back and I added two more layers of the frame in there and then it worked perfectly. Added those on, put the back on and look at that. It shakes beautifully. Now I'm going to put glue all over the back of it after I use my bone folder to burnish those corners down because I don't want that to go anywhere. I don't want any of the shaker pieces to come flying out, to get stuck on any of that glue on the back. I want to make sure that I have a really, really good seal. I also want to make sure that I know how to line up my paper to make it look like it's a continuous piece even though there's that pattern paper or that uh, ombre paper in between. So I'm using that same Honey Bee Precision Glue to glue the back of it. I put a lot of glue on it and then put it down. Now that the shaker part is done, we are going to glue it down to the card base. So I took a piece of dark blue cardstock and cut it to eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and created the card base. Now I'm taking my ATG and putting it all over that back panel opening the card up so it's a little bit easier to make sure that I have it lined up on all sides, placing that down. And the last little piece, I thought it needed something else, so we're going to add a sentiment. The sentiment is from MFT's stamp set called Be Original, and they actually have, I believe, two versions of the stamp set. I have both of them. There's a sneaker die that goes along with it, which is one of the reasons that I went with this, um, because I knew I had footwear 
punny sentiments in my stash with MFT. So I thought this one was absolutely perfect. I inked it up with MFT ink and I believe this is called Night Shift Blue. I went through my colors and this was the closest to the card base that I could find. I stamped it a couple of times and then I'm going to use my leftover ink on my brush and actually both of the brushes to kind of make it look ombre like the background. And then we are going to use that same honeybee glue to glue it down. And that is the card. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you check out the Sparkle Blend site and find something that you love there. I will see you guys again real soon for another video. Bye!